Welcome, Susan Burton. It's so good to see you. It's been too long. When's the last? It's been a couple of years. It's been a couple of years. Yes. The, the world has changed so much Yes. Uh, since I last saw you, but it's great to see you, John. It's great to have you here. We're going to help people learn a lot about what you do and how we've collaborated in the past and, and what our vision is for a better country, a better world. And uh, first of all, I want people to know about your organization, New Way of Life, and uh, talk about that organization, what inspired you to start it, and what kind of work you all are doing there. Um, what inspired me to start a new way of life was my own journey. Mm -hmm. Being born in a housing project uh, called Aliso Village mm -hmm. and experiencing just many, many uh, forms of abuse and holding on and holding on and then the the death of my son who was hit by a hit and run car left me just um, so full of grief and loss and pain uh, that I began to medicate it. Mm -hmm. John, I literally tried to drown the grief and it escalated um, to drug use and the drug use sent me to prison. Yes. Instead of someone helping me, um, I was punished yes. for medicating my grief. I was punished uh, and not given the help that would have made me better, that would have allowed me to heal and rehabilitate. And after um, many, many times in prison, uh, I remember the last time the guard said, you'll be back. Mm. Burton, you'll be back. We're keeping a bed for you. And, you know, the system is, is made to keep people coming back. It doesn't rehabilitate. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't um, uh, help people. It just harms people. And we all leave prison worse than when we came in. Mm -hmm. And we need to do something different. And so you started a new way of life to help do something different so that when folks came out of incarceration, when they tried to reenter society, they had help, they had support. Tell me a little bit about what you do to help support folks who are coming out of incarceration. Uh, a new way of life has a holistic approach to support women uh, as they're released from prisons and jails. So we uh, provide them with housing, uh, case management, legal services, uh, uh, support for jobs, support to go back to school. But I think what we do that's most important is we create a community that is welcoming mm -hmm. and honors the humanity and potential of each person that we work with. Well, you know, I, I know what that is like to be a part of a family where um, you have a mother that's struggling and needs help and not punishment. Uh, after my mother's mother died, she uh, got depressed and found uh, substances that tried to get at that depression and medicate um, that were illegal substances, but they were what she thought would help her get through that pain. And she never went to prison, but she was in, uh, in the jail system uh, at times in my hometown. And I know that she needed help and not punishment. And it's so good to have her back in our family, fully integrated back in our family. And uh, how important it is to have that family love and that family support. And you're able to do that both by reunifying people with their biological families, but also creating a family around them, making them feel like they're loved, like they're part of a community that supports them and holds them accountable and, and, and gives them opportunity to be their best versions of themselves so that they don't end up back in the situation they were in before. Exactly. And that could have happened uh, before prison. Yes. Before jail. Yes. If we in our communities, look for a different approach and investment to supporting people with rehabilitative services yes. instead of punishment. And let's talk about that because a lot of people over the past year after George Floyd and after seeing all the protests in uh, communities all across the country and around the world, 
we're asking questions about how to make society more equitable, how to pursue uh, public safety without harming the communities that are uh, suffering the most from uh, harm and, and violence and all these things. How do we do that? And so many answers over the years have been more police, more punishment. What you needed was someone to help you as you were going through grief, going through pain, to understand that uh, drug abuse is usually a mental health issue that needs mental health treatment and doesn't need punishment. Yes. The issue that I dealt with, the issue your mom dealt mm -hmm. with, it was a medical problem. Yes. It was a mental health problem. Yes. Um, so, so I think that we just need to have the heart and the compassion and see the humanity mm -hmm. of all people and give them the support and the help they need to make our communities wholer, safer, healthier, and happier. Yes. That's what we need to do. And you do it on a very local level. You're touching people. You're talking to people. Yeah. You're getting very proximate to their lives and their struggles. If you're not proximate, you don't really get the entire picture. We started Free America, and you were, you were around when we started it. Yes. Very early on, we sat down with you and some other organizers and activists around the country, and we really wanted to listen. We wanted to learn from you all, and we didn't want to do anything uh, without talking to you all and really learning what your priorities were and how we could help. And that really taught us how important local work is to all this stuff we're doing. And so the reason we started Human Level is because we learned from Free America, from our work at Free America, how important it was to talk to folks in the community and do a lot of this work when we're pursuing public safety and justice. When we think about all those goals that we have, so many of them need to happen on a local level and we have to touch what's going on on a human level so we can understand it. And so we started Human Level, inspired by people like you, saying, how do we make the government, local government, more responsive, more equitable, more fair, more uh, able to listen to the concerns of the community and then translate those concerns into policy that will actually improve people's lives? Young man, truly, you are a drum major for justice. Oh, thank you. You are a drum major for peace. Thank you Thank so you. much for being John Legend. Thank you, Susan. We love you too, <laughs> and we appreciate you too. Thank you for helping us learn about what you're doing and hopefully inspiring and empowering us to do a bit of our own work, getting close to the problems, learning about them, and then doing something about them. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm.